My name's Seth and welcome to the video. What do I have for you today? Let's talk tailwheel. Let's talk about one of the most controversial topics in aviation, in general aviation specifically, tailwheel airplanes. So what is the big deal with tailwheel airplanes? Well, I'm glad you stopped by because I have 10 tailwheel tips that I think you're gonna enjoy. Hey, I have something special to announce. In addition to this video, I've written a guide of these tips for a small purchase price on Amazon Kindle. Link in the description and on screen. But I'll email it to you for free if you sign up for my VIP email club. Click this link in the description and fill out a super quick form to join. On this channel, we talk banner towing. We talk general aviation. I show you cool videos cool places I've been, cool airplanes, all that good stuff. So thanks for coming by and I hope you stick around for the entire video. Also, if you want to learn how to not be like this guy, stick around for all my tips and then we'll talk about this crash at the end of the video. All right, let's get into the video. 10 tailwheel tips. So what specifically about tailwheel are we gonna talk about today? What are these tips? Where do they come from? What are they? These are the 10 tips that I use on a daily basis whenever I go to fly. If you don't know, I'm a banner tow pilot, and when I go to work every day, I get in a tailwheel aircraft. So it's very important to understand how to fly a tailwheel aircraft and how to stay safe in it every single day. It's not a nose wheel aircraft, and you need a special endorsement. You need about 10 hours, and you have to have a CFI sign you off, and there's a reason for that. It can be dangerous if you're not careful. So what I want to do today is I want to share with you my 10 tips that I use every single day to keep me safe. A uh, little disclaimer, I'm not a CFI, okay? So I just wanna let you know, I'm just a commercial pilot. So these tips that I'm gonna share with you are not from a CFI, they're not from a certified source, they're just what I use every single day. And I'd like to encourage you to think about these things when you're flying your tailwheel aircraft. So, take it or leave it, here's my 10 tips. You guys ready? Let's get into it. Tip number one, taxi slow. Why do I say taxi slow? Because you're not in a nose wheel aircraft. It's so easy to forget when you're taxiing that you know you don't have that nose wheel. And so you kind of turn a certain way when you're in a nose wheel aircraft. It's not the same for a tail wheel. Can't stress that enough. It's simple, but it's something to keep in the back of your mind at all times. The slower you go when you're taxiing, the more time that you have to recover if things go south. If all of a sudden a gust of wind comes and hits your tail, and pushes the back end of the airplane, causing you to kind of go to the left or the right. If you're taxiing slow, you have enough time to recover. And that's important because you don't want to go off the taxiway, you don't want to go off the runway and damage your airplane. All right, tip number two, rudder walk. What is rudder walk? Well, if you were walking with your feet, you'd be making left, right, left, right, left, right. That's what you should be doing on the rudders. Now, I'm not talking like, the plane going left, the plane going right, the plane going left. No, you're just basically tapping with your feet. You're on the rudders, you're ready. As you may or may not know, tailwheel aircraft, also known as conventional gear aircraft, have two main wheels and then a wheel at the back, which is a free form casting wheel in most cases, kind of like a wheel on a shopping cart. It just kind of spins freely. You know, it turns past a certain amount of a radius. Usually it's about 30 degrees then the tailwheel will break free and then it will freely spin just like a shopping cart. When I was learning how to fly tailwheel, my instructor pounded it into my head, rudder walk, rudder walk, rudder walk. The plane's not going anywhere, you're just ready to go. If something happens, you're ready to react. If all of a sudden the airplane goes to the left, you can react with the right rudder that quickly. So that's what rudder walk is. So remember that term, rudder walk. Just wanna say if you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would actually encourage you to click on the red subscribe button, click on the like button, looks like this, big thumbs up, if you are enjoying the content, and then leave a comment and share with your friends. Really appreciate you being here, and I hope you stay along for the journey. Tip number three, wind correction. Always, 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 always have proper wind correction in. 
Remember from your training and from your books, your CFI probably told you, fly into, dive away. The principle stays with tailwheel aircraft. In fact, it's even more crucial with tailwheel aircraft because if you don't follow it and wind comes and picks up your tail, you can have a prop strike. You don't want that, trust me. Propeller's supposed to cut through the air, not through the grass, not through the concrete or the rocks. So keep the tail on the ground. Wind correction always. That's my tip number three. All right, tip number four is a pretty important one. Be gentle, but be deliberate. This is not a 172. A 172 was built with what we like to call a lot of slop in it. It is a very, very forgiving airplane. The 172 allows you to make mistakes or be a little bit lazy on your controls and you can get away with it. The aerodynamics are built into the airplane to kind of let you get away with it. We call this slop. But a tailwheel aircraft, like a Piper Cub or a Citabria, those airplanes will do exactly, exactly what you tell it to do. If you move the stick a little bit to the left, it's going left. If you add a little bit of right rudder, it's going right. That's how fast it happens. These airplanes are very responsive. And so be gentle and deliberate. All right, tip number five, minimum to no brakes. What do I mean by this? Well, when you're taxiing, but mostly when you're landing, it's a good idea to stay off of the brakes because uh, what can happen is, is if you hit the brakes, especially if the brakes really hard, you can bring the tail up into the air and cause the nose and the propeller to strike the ground. So don't do that, that's not good. Especially if you're coming in with a lot of speed and energy. Also, you don't wanna use your brakes on your landings because you can actually ground loop. If you're not familiar with the term ground loop, basically what happens is the tail of the airplane goes one way pretty swiftly and the airplane will spin around in a circle in place. It's really not a good thing, it's really horrible. Don't do it. Um, you can actually tip the airplane and you can drag a wing tip or you can do damage to the gear. So stay off the brakes as much as you can. If you have to use the brakes, super minimum on the brakes, like when you're taxiing, but uh, just let it roll. If you land and you have a 7,000 foot runway and you landed at the thousands, just let it roll. Let it roll, let the energy to bleed off. You don't need to use the brakes. Number six, fire is your friend. What do I mean by this? Power, engine power, throttle, whatever you want to call it. You're coming in for a landing and it starts to get a little squirrely. You're in ground effect and you feel like the landing's not going well. Add power, power is your friend, power is life gonna get you out of that situation, give you a little bit of climb, get you to get the nose forward again so that you don't stall and drop a wing tip. But also what it's gonna do is as you add power, you're gonna increase the airflow over the control surfaces. So if you're coming in and you're finding that you're having a hard time controlling the airplane with the rudder, you add power, now you have additional airflow over the rudder and you've just given it more authority. So definitely remember, fire is your friend. All right, number seven. Number seven has been stuck in my head since I started training. My tailwheel instructor drilled number seven into my head. What is number seven? One bounce, go around, you're not ready for the ground. Basically what this means, you're coming in, you have too much energy, you're getting ready to land, you're getting ready to flare, boom, you bounce, you get it back in the air. You can get into a really bad situation really quickly if you try to save it. Some people, more experienced people, will add power and then they will save it. But by this time, what I found is I'm usually starting to run out of runway. So I honestly, when I bounce once and it was a surprise to me, I don't want to fix it. I just want to try it again. So I add power, fire's your friend, going back to number six, add power, go around and do it again. So number seven, one bounce, go around, you're not ready for the ground. All right, number eight. Number eight specific when it comes to final. Center line, pitch, power, rudder walk. Center line, basically coming in, you have one mile final, you're looking, get straight down the runway. If you have a, a crosswind, whatever it is, maintain your center line. Once you have center line, then you wanna look at your pitch. And I'm not talking pitch as in the relation of the nose. Look out to your left or look out to your right and look at your wingtip. Look at the angle that the wingtip intersects the horizon. That's gonna give you the most information of what your pitch actually is when it comes to your approach. Way better than looking at the nose of the airplane. Power basically, you wanna hold an airspeed for your approach, let's say it's 80 knots, just check your power. 
just make sure that you've got what you want, what you need for that approach and for that landing. Might be at idle, whatever it is, just check your power. And finally, rudder walk. Same thing as number two, the only difference is, is you're in the air, so slowly, you're just tapping the pedals, you're just ready to go. If anything gets a little crazy and you need to add a correction, you're ready. Basically to keep you from locking up and freezing up and being stiff in the cockpit. You wanna be loose and you wanna be ready, so that's why the last one there is rudder walk. Center line, pitch, power, rudder walk. All right, number nine. Number nine is my favorite, and the reason why is because once I learned number nine, my landings, they came like that. What is number nine? Hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. Basically, you come in for your landing, you level off, you get in ground effect, and you flare, and you hold it off, and you hold it off, and you hold it off, let that energy bleed off, and then the airplane will touch down when it's ready. This one was drilled into my head until I got it. My instructor, I remember he told me, when you're getting ready to land, I want you saying in your own head, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. So I did that, wasn't working. So then he made me say it out loud. I want you to say in the microphone, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off when you're in your flare. And guess what? It finally worked. What I've noticed with me is that if I forget to say hold it off three times, my landings aren't very good. I come in, I flare, and I drop onto the runway, and I hate that, I absolutely hate that. Coming in for that flare, saying hold it off out loud three times, and then the wheel gently touches the concrete, gives me that nice little squeak, I absolutely love that. That's what I'm striving to do on my landings every single time. I should also note that when you do touch down in a tailwheel aircraft, make sure that stick is all the way back. You want that tail to stay on the ground. All right, final tip, number 10. Fly that airplane to the finish. What does that mean? Well, you've heard some people say, you're not done flying until it's tied down, you're not done flying until it's in the hangar. Same concept. Basically, you're not done flying until you're done flying. So, fly that airplane to the finish. Never quit, never give up. Don't make the mistake of after you've touched the ground to say, okay, I'm done. It's good to be on the ground, whatever. It's not over. You're not done until you're done. So fly that airplane to the finish every single time. And that also goes for when you're in the air. Go back to the hazardous attitude resignation. We don't wanna resign. Fly that airplane all the way. Don't quit, don't give up. Today's actually a great example. I went flying today, uh, it was a little bit windy, started getting worse, started getting really gusty, and after about 15 minutes in the flight, I realized I don't wanna do this anymore. Uh, this is not going well, I want this flight to be over and it was just really, really, really bumpy and hard to climb and hard to maintain altitude and I just wanted to be done. But then I reminded myself, fly this airplane to the finish because I'm not done. Because you can get in that mindset where you just kind of start to give up. Don't do that, never do that, don't quit. You still have an airplane to land, you still have to get home to your family. So just remember that, fly that airplane to the finish. Just real quick, I want to share with you guys an airplane accident that happened uh, recently at our airport. This tailwheel aircraft um, actually lost control on takeoff, went over to the right side of the runway, hit a concrete drain, and the right landing gear sheared off, flew across the airport, maybe not that far, it was like 100 feet away. Then it bounced, hit the nose into the dirt, which you can see here from where the propeller has cut the grass and then it kind of slid to a stop on the other side of the taxiway. This happened about 10 minutes before I got in and there were fire trucks and emergency equipment everywhere. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. I don't know how, but nobody got hurt in this airplane. And uh, the airplane's completely destroyed, sadly. I mean, maybe it's salvageable, maybe it's float plane worthy, I don't know. And um, you can see from these pictures of how bad it actually was. But I just want to share this with you it's really sad that this airplane got destroyed, but thankfully nobody was hurt. That's the best part. But I'm using this as an example to show you guys of why these tips are so important to me, these 10 tips, because I never want to end up like this airplane where I'm basically my tail's in the air and I'm missing a landing gear. So it was bad. And actually now this airplane's sitting on the side of the airport about 100 feet from the runway. So when you're coming in for a landing, you can see it on final. And it's just a brutal reminder of why you need to be on your game when you're landing tailwheel airplanes. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you are subscribed, I really appreciate you guys coming back. Please uh, leave a like, share, comment, do all those things. I really appreciate that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. That wraps up the content for this video, and I hope you guys come back for the next one. All right, thanks. See ya, and fly safe. Oh, I love that sound of the squeak when the wheels touch the pavement. 
Love it, every single time I hear it. <laughs> 